Hello. Hi. Welcome back. Happy Wednesday. Hump day. Hump day. <laughs> I love day for us. I know. I'm so excited. Live days are my favorite days. They really are because, yeah. you know, at first when we decided that we were only going to go live one day a week, after the holiday season where we went so hard and we went live so many times, I was like, oh, like I'm I ready. can breathe. Um, I'm ready for the one day a week. But then really and truly, like now that we're here and we've been in the one day a week, y'all, I miss y'all. It feels different. Like yeah. it doesn't feel like we get to hang out as much. I don't much. get to hang out with you guys as much and yeah. I miss y'all. I know. Me too. So um, everyone's... Lots of people are here. Well, we got about 60 right now. Yeah. Love it. Happy Wednesday. Um, happy birthday to Sin. By the way, if you guys yes. are unfamiliar, Sin is an employee here at Makers Go Learn. It's her birthday today. So happy birthday, Sin. Everybody Shout wish out. Sin a happy birthday in the comments. Yes. She's probably here somewhere. I know she is. She's always hanging out with us. Sadie says she's here. Um, Tracy loves your glasses. Oh, thanks. They're, me too. They're El Cheapos. I need to get I some. I only buy El Cheapos. Well, me too, because <laughs> I be losing my glasses all the time. You know, ever since I started buying cheap ones, I don't lose them. I know. But the expensive weird how that ones that I used to buy? Straight in the lake. Straight in the lake, or I would break them. <laughs> Run over them with my car. Something would always happen. Yeah. Asher broke. Asher, when he was little, pulled a pair of Versace mm. glasses that I had, took the arms of them, and just crack it's so tempting though like as a kid you I know. know can you remember just yeah just can't resist i know <laughs> <laughs> you know y'all one time i like kinked you know, you know those like herringbone gold necklaces in the 90s yeah okay so my mom had one of those and me as the wild child i was i went in there and bent it bent it all the way <laughs> down <laughs> And I just remember thinking, I can't be stopped. I couldn't stop. And she was like, did you do this? And I was like, absolutely not. I no, would never do that. Not at all. I would never do that. So now, I don't even know if she knows that I actually did it. Well, now, if you don't know, Sorry, now mom. you know. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> That's hilarious. Lots Every, of people saying happy birthday. Oh, so sweet. So sweet. Yes. So. so I want to start off by saying... Who all is already signed up, ready, and excited for boot camp? Drop me an emoji if yes. you are excited for next week because y'all, mm, it's it's coming. Mm. Look at our little camping emojis for our boot camp. Oh, our little, oh. That's cute. I love that. I do too. I love that. So if you guys are like, what the heck are y'all talking about? What's boot camp? How do I go? Um, we do a quarterly boot. It's quarterly. Yeah, quarterly boot camp, um, and we do a week of crafting with you guys. And so our, yeah. our, our craft month boot camp is coming up on Monday through Friday next week. Mm -hmm. um, and this is like our biggest one ever. We have almost 20,000 people signed up for boot camp. Y'all. I just don't even know how to even Like react. my mind. Yeah, literally. Like, I don't even know how to respond to that. What so, am I going to do? Yeah, and we were talking about, we did a podcast today because we were like, let's do a fun little podcast. Me, Courtney, yeah. and Lauren did one. And um, we were just talking about, like, all of our members. We know y'all are going to be there. If y'all are in the comments during boot camp next week, like, help us out by just, like, yeah. being, I mean, I think it's going to be nice for people that haven't been on the channel for as long to see us interacting and, like, being able to help each other. And there's going to be a lot of people, so we're going to need reinforcements from you guys yeah to help us okay so a couple things that i want to address okay. kimmy says me i even have a babysitter so i won't miss anything that's <laughs> what i'm talking Shout about out. yes the other one is trudy if you have tried to sign up um then and you don't think you are email hi at makers gonna learn com. which one is out mayor can you you think it's lauren's no, it's not me. Hope oh, one of us, Alicia. one of us is dead. I'm on too. Is your button green? Can you hear me? Yeah. Raise your hand on. Tell us who you can't hear. Yeah, it's green. Okay. Well, you guys tell us if you cannot hear us. Well, okay. One of us is our mic is messed up. I think. Yeah, we'll get this worked out. So anyway, um, Trudy, Lauren, it's me. Sin says it's Lauren. Uh oh. Yeah, I think it's Lauren. Okay, well, it's just really weird. Just turn it off and turn it back on again, oh, maybe. You know, that always does the trick. That 
That always does the trick. <laughs> well, Lauren is trying to say is if you're trying to get signed up for boot camp and you're having problems, yep. is that where am I going? Okay. Um, you need to email hi at makersgonnalearn.com and they will get you all signed up. What about me? Okay, that's really weird. Some people, the some people said channel. they can hear both of us. Okay. So, anyways. Uh, oh, okay. Can you hear me now? How's it sound now? <laughs> it says you're just quieter. Lauren can enunciate. Or, uh, well, I need to stop messing with it right now. Okay, I'm going to let you fix it, and we're going to chit-chat in the comments. Yeah. So, um, if you are not signed up for boot camp, Sadie has dropped or pinned a link at the top of the chat. If you all are wanting to sign up, you can sign up today. You just need your email. The boot camp is completely free, so you all don't actually have to pay anything. You just need to give us your email. That way, we can give you the supply list ahead of time, which is going to be really nice for you all because um, it's just going to be a lot easier for you to complete the crafts with us. Um, and also, we are putting out a podcast on Sunday, a little sneakeroo, like a little sneak peek of boot camp. If you all are interested in like kind of hearing about some of the projects, um, we call, go into detail about how we get out of creative rut. So that's kind of cool because you're going to get to hear from me, Lauren and Courtney on how we do that. Um, and so, yeah, does anybody have any questions? Lindsay, the supply lists have already been sent. If you've signed up the supply list, have been sent. Um, if you received it a couple weeks ago, we've updated a couple of the supplies, but they should be totally updated now. So, can you guys hear Lauren? <laughs> well, so Lauren is hosting today, so what I'm going to do is give her my mic and go ahead and let you get started on the craft, and then I'm going to be over here running the sideshow on your janky mic until... <laughs> Love it. Okay, I'm passing. I'm passing the mic to Lauren, and then I'm gonna go ahead and let you get started. Okay. That way, um, we're not. There we go. Hold now. Well, Bear with us for a minute. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Let me check something. Let, let me hold on. Technical difficulties. Um. Yes, Sin makes a really good point. If you sign up, you're eligible to win prizes. Lots of prizes every day. And Tanner also likes to throw in some like spontaneous prizes. So. What about now? Check her now. Oh, no. Should we be on different channels? We've never had this issue. We can on here. I changed us both to three just then because it was on, that one was on five. Go back to five, or group five is what it was on. Uh, this, this, this is my favorite thing when we have technical issues. Wait, how do you do it? There we go. Okay, right five. there. Uh-huh, that's what it was on. Okay. Yep. Sin also said if you are not a member and you sign up for boot camp, you do get the cut files and fonts for free that we're using in mm -hmm. boot camp. Is it still fuzzy? Okay. What about me? We love that for us. Okay, Lauren sounds good. Yeah, Let's we're just gonna get started. Lauren's gonna start crafting. We're gonna we're gonna get started. Give me two seconds. Let me put my mic on. <laughs> the hazards of a live. Yeah. Really yeah. Okay. So sorry, guys. What was that? That's the train. The train is That's the train. the train. I hear that now. <laughs> okay. So, what we are going to be making today is this really, really cute shelf sitter sign. Y'all, this is so simple, so easy. And we got this blank Dollar Tree. Dollar and, Tree. And, and, get this, you can order it online in less qu quantities. You do not have to order, used to you had to order like 25 at a time. Mm -mm, no, just I think three or four of these and you can get this. So um, love this blank. Now this does say bros because we are making two of these for the twins, Tanner and Courtney's twins. So 
they're both going to say bros, but you can put literally whatever you want on here. If you have a brother and a sister, you can put bro and sis. You can put a name. There are so many different ways that you can do this. Now, um, Arlene asked, where do I go to sign up for boot camp? Sadie just dropped the link for you. If you'll click that link, give us your email. You will then get the, it is completely free to sign up. You will then get the supply list sent to you as well as the cut files and fonts that we're going to be using for um, boot camp. And it's also pinned at the top if you can't get that link that Sadie dropped to work for you. So that's really, really exciting. Now, we are going to be cutting Cricut wood veneer today. So this is what we're going to be cutting. We are cutting Cricut wood veneer. You can do this with a Maker Series or an Explorer. So you don't have to have a... Um, this is not a, you don't have to have an adaptive tool for this. This is just the deep cut blade. So let's go overhead. This is what the package looks like. Um, this is just the cherry wood. There are different finishes. This is the natural wood finish. They have a cherry wood finish. Um, but they all, and they also have a walnut finish. Okay. So, um, you can choose what finish you like. If this specifically is not really your style you can go with whatever stain you want and a different color here on the word that you put on your shelf sitter so that's going to be really up to you but obviously you need your wooden blank here that we got at the dollar tree that we have here you need your cricut wood veneer you are going to need some type of strong grip mat now y'all this is a new strong grip mat and let me tell you it is strong. It is strong. Like almost, I don't want to say it's too strong, but it's, it's getting close. It's really close. But anyway, so you do need a strong grip mat if by chance, and I'm going to pull this one up here. If by chance you have a strong grip mat that looks a little more like this, that isn't as strong, um, you can use masking tape to take down your material, your Cricut wood veneer, to keep it down on your mat. That way it doesn't move. Um, that's just a little workaround that I like to do sometimes is I like to take materials down, especially if I don't trust my mat. And y'all know me, sometimes I have trust issues. So not just with the mats, <laughs> with everything in general, just trust issues in general. Um, we are also going to be using DAP Rapid Fuse Glue. This is our go-to here in the office for when we need something to adhere very fast and very strong. We do love the DAP Rapid Fuse Glue that is linked down below. The stain that we're going to be using is, I feel like we do this every time, early American. Early American. Always early American. My bedroom furniture is stained with that. It's like my favorite. It's my favorite. I just feel like it's just a good, medium, warm stain. It's not too dark. It's not too light. It's just, mm, I, think it's, I think it's great. So we are using the Minwax Early American. Now, to put this stain on our blank, y'all, don't go out and buy staining rags. I think I have staining rags linked below. But here, as you can see, we have an old t-shirt that we were obviously at one point going to sublimate on that we have put in our staining thing that we will cut up little staining rags whenever we need it. So an old t-shirt is probably my favorite thing um, to stain with. So that is really good to have on hand. And then I do have some, um, about a medium grit, just feeling of this. I'm going to guess, oh, 120, I was gonna guess 80. Um, but so this is like a 120 grit. Sandpaper, that's just to give this um, blank a nice little sand. I really like to just go over it before I stain it. That's just kind of blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that's just going to kind of open up the pores in this wood so that it can really soak in that stain. Um, but we're just going to give this a light sand here in a minute. And then last but not least, we have our Cricut Deep Point Blade. Now, let's talk about this for a minute because, let's go to one. Can y'all hear me now? I turned my mic back on. I'm just curious. Nope. Okay, I'll be over here. Amazing. <laughs> so, 
let's talk about the Cricut Deep Point Blade. Now, this is in a black housing, so one might think that you would have to have a completely different housing, like you have to buy this whole thing, right? If you were to see this and you didn't know much about Cricut, and let me, okay, and you saw that I had a fine point blade, and it's in a little silver housing, yeah. and a deep point blade that's in a black housing, would you think you would have to have both of them? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, the thing with this is, technically, you don't. You don't, technically. You don't have to have a different housing. Now, Cricut designed it this way so that you do keep your deep point blade in this black housing so you can tell the difference. Um, but really and truly, the only difference between the deep point blade, and we'll go overhead to see if you all can see the difference, um, the, the biggest difference is the angle of the blade. So for those that are new to Cricut, or maybe you just didn't know this, um, the fine point blade, which is the silver one, has a 45 degree angle blade, okay? The deep point blade has a 60 degree angle blade. And really and truly, that is the only difference. So when you take these blades out, let me do this so I won't lose it. And then I'll hold it up where you guys can see. So as you can see, let me pull it over to the side. Both of the blades look the exact same except for the angle, which you can tell when you get really, really close to it. Um, but you can actually buy the replacement blades on Amazon for really cheap, not have to go buy the deep point blade housing and use the deep point blade in your fine point blade housing, just for those that didn't know or wanted to know, okay? Um, can y'all link the Amazon blades you use? Yes, I actually, I didn't link them specifically because I didn't think I was going to go into talking to y'all about this. This was just kind of off the cuff that I decided to do this. Um, and we had a friend ask us, we've had a couple friends ask, is this the same as the knife blade? No, it is not. Let me see if I can pull up a knife blade. Actually, I pull up, I have a knife blade here. So... A knife blade um, is a blade that is, this is an adaptive tool. And this is something that Cricut that is new um, for the, or that is specific to the Maker series. So this is an adaptive tool called the knife blade that can only be used in the Maker series. This cannot be used on an Explorer series machine, okay? Um, and that is why we are using the deep cut blade. That's why we're using the Cricut wood veneer because it is cut with the deep point blade which can be used on the Explorer or the Maker series. It can be used in both. So, um, this, like I said, this is something, your knife blade is going to cut thicker materials like chipboard, um, what else? Thick like leather. Thick leather, you will use your knife blade to cut that. Um, there's a few other ones, but like I said, this is one of the adaptive tools that is specific to the Maker series. Uh, Tamika says, today years old on the blade and housing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> did you also know, Let's since we're having a little blade discussion today, did you also know that the fabric blade, so we'll go overhead, the fabric blade, or no, is this the, yeah, this is the fabric blade. It is also the exact same housing as the fine point blade. Did you also know that the fabric blade is a fine point blade? In a pink housing. In a pink housing. That is it. The only good thing is that you can keep them separate, like you can keep your fabric separate from your regular scissors? Right. So just like when you use, you don't use fabric scissors to cut paper. Like that's a, that's a crafting 101. You never use your fabric scissors to cut paper because what does it do? It dulls your scissors. Right. So you have your 
pink housing for your fabric blade that is the same color as your pink fabric grip mat. So you kind of remember. Um, but this is still a fine point, 45 degree angle blade. There is literally nothing different. The only difference is Cricut changed the color of the housing so that you could keep your fabric blade, the blade that cuts your fabric, separate from the blade that cuts your paper. That's it. Um, now, we did have someone ask, which blade is the 30 degree angle blade? Cricut actually doesn't have a, I guess, housing for the 30 degree angle. A lot of times that one, that blade is overlooked. We don't really use it that much. I personally would think the only time I would ever use a 30 degree angle blade would be if I were cutting something such as tissue paper, maybe. Like it has to be a very fine material, very dainty material. Um, so yeah. That is, I, we, I, me personally, have, I've never used the 30 degree angle blade. I've I always, I've, I've used always used the 45 degree angle blade. Um, but it, it, you can use it. Um, Y'all teaching, teaching today. today. Yep. <laughs> yep. Under threat of life, if someone using my fabric scissors for anything under, other than fabric, absolutely done, done. Um, so I can cut my, uh, I can cut acrylic with my Explore. Can y'all hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Still no. nothing? Okay. No, no, no. okay. Um, you can cut, I would say. So it I has to be thin acrylic for this. I was this. talking to Kathy about this. Yeah, because she was asking about the deep cut. Let blade. me come over here and so you, she can hear you. Um, yes, Kathy. So you're talking about the deep, the deep cut blade. You can cut acrylic, but it needs to be very, very thin, almost like. Like mylar acetate. Like, uh, yeah, Borderline. very thin. Yes. So, you know. Okay. Okay. Now, let's get back to our project. So, now that we've had a little blade segment today, let's go ahead and jump into our project. Yeah. So, first thing I'm going to do before I go into design space, before I do anything else, I'm going to take my stickers off the back here. I'm actually going to stain this right now so that I can set it aside and kind of let it sit while we are working on everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my t-shirt. I'm not going to use those scissors because those are, those are some good, good scissors. I won't cut on the paper. I won't, I won't cut paper with those scissors. Yeah, go grab some other scissors. Those are the good scissors. Oh wait, I found some. Nermond. Nermond. Okay. So we're just going to cut us up a little rag here. And then, there we go. I'm going to grab a glove because you don't want to stain your hand. And I am not staining these new white nails. Sorry, y'all. You're going to have to give me a minute. And I'm just going to give this a good shake. And before I open that up, I'm going to take my sandpaper and I'm just going to give this a light sand. And now we're going to open up our stain and we are going to stain our, do y'all like, like how we use literally whatever we have handy to open up our paint cans? Also, this is obviously a really old paint can. I'm going to break that if I'm not careful. Let's try this. There we go. There she blows. And then I'm going to knock that off of there. And throw my rag in the floor. And now we're just going to start staining our blank. Kelly says, use what you got. Listen, it's that is how we live around here. It literally is our life motto. Use what you got. I um, we actually, uh, I think me and Alicia back around the first of the year, one of our goals was to try our best to do our crafts with what we have on hand, and like ordering something would be last resort. Mm -hmm. We've done really good at that so far. I feel like being resourceful and crafting just 
Yeah. Go, it goes hand in hand. Yeah. And it kind of forces you to be more creative. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, girl. Mm -mm. No, I ain't about to touch that with those fingernails. Y'all, I just got my, oh no, I just got my fingernails redone yesterday, and they're white. I probably do need another glove. <laughs> Let me just put on a second glove on this other hand. Okay. Shoo. There we go. Now I got my other hand covered so I don't get white on, or get. You're protected. Protected now. Okay. Now this, I'm not, one thing for, I want you guys to know, this is an open grain. I'm not going to dip back into my stain because I don't want this super, super dark. And if I were to dip back in my stain and have this rag saturated with stain, this edge would be very dark. So we're just going to use what is left on here and just try to keep it even with what we've got. And then I may have to dip back in for this side. Just a little, we'll get something off the lid. There we go. And then if you want to stain the back, you can. This is a pretty um, rough cut. It's like they didn't sand the back side of this. So if I were to stain this, this is not, go they didn't sand this down very well. So it's going to really soak up this stain. It's almost like you bought it from the Dollar Tree. It's almost like I bought it from the Dollar Tree. You are right. <laughs> It's almost like it's a Dollar Tree craft thing. But as y'all can see, like this is what sawmill lumber does. If you try to stain it, it ain't no good. Yeah, you, gotta stain it really you do have to sand it really, really good. Like just planer, this, like a planer. probably more so a planer because this sandpaper isn't even going to get it as smooth as it needs to be to stain as well as it did on the front. So since this is just a shelf sitter and it's going to be sitting up against the wall, I'm not even going to worry about the back of it. So now that that is stained, I'm going to lay it on this little paper towel and I'm going to set it to the side. And I'm going to grab another paper towel and wipe off my table. Does anybody have any questions so far? Um, I think we've answered everything so far, but um, everyone was really loving. Everyone loves a good blade to I mean, who doesn't, really? Everyone loves when we talk about blades. It's like a thing. Every time it gets brought up, I think I think because there's just so many, and people are overwhelmed by the amount of different options and different things all the blades can do. Also, I got stain on this fabric grip mat, and I don't know how I'm going to get it off. It's okay. It's all good. It's all good. It's fine. Okay. So now I am going to take off my gloves, and then we're going to hop over into design space. And this, what we're doing today in Design Space is so easy, y'all. We're literally just taking a Maker's Gonna Learn font and typing out what we want. Mm -hmm. There is going to be a hack with how to place this, and I'm really excited to share that with you all. So. I was just trying to think of what you would put for a brother and a sister, and in my brain I literally said sibs. Sibs? S I B S. I would just put bro and sis. Yeah, I think that would be cute. Bro and sis. Sisses. Sisses. Okay. So we're going to hop over here later. Sorry, y'all. We got a bunch of stuff going on. Yeah. Um, is the strong grip mat the same as a fabric grip? No, it is not. The And I did not realize this um, until the other day. The fabric grip is actually, I think Courtney said it falls between a light grip and a standard, or maybe even a little less tacky. Fabric grip? Mm hmm Bet. I feel like fabric grip is between standard and strong grip. That sucker is tacky. She said it wasn't supposed to be as tacky. Really? See, I thought the same as you. I thought it was supposed to be tackier. They're sticky. Those not, I would almost think they're... Why don't you look it up? I'm gonna Google, it. Google it. That's what we have Google for. Right. And looky here, y'all. We don't have this font in our, on this computer. So I'm going to get to teach you all how to download a font from your computer into Design Space. How fun. So today we are going to be using the um, 
font Noah from Maker's Gonna Learn. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna sign into our website. And then once we sign in, we are going to go to our fonts and we are going to search Noah. Now I was looking for a very blocky font for this project. Um, you don't have to use Noah. There are some really, really good blocky fonts on our website. Um, if you all haven't checked those out, this would be a great way to do that. One thing that I did when I was choosing which font I wanted that I love about our website is I previewed the text. So I typed in what I wanted it to say. So it was bros and I was able to search that. So if you wanted to do a name, let's do rubes. Actually, that's not how I spell rubes. I like to spell rubes with two O's. That's how I spell it. How do you spell it first? R-U-B-S. Oh. Rubs. <laughs> Rubs. Rubes. That would be so cute in her room. It would be cute. I'm about to give her a big girl room, so. Just, just rubes. Just rooms. So you can preview anything you want it to say and then you can go through the fonts on our website and pick which one you like the best. Um, so we are actually going to be downloading this. Um, and Donna says I just added four MGL fonts today. So there really are so many great fonts on our website. I love them. So to download our fonts, you're going to click this arrow that's pointing down here and it is going to download here. Now, it depends on what kind of computer you have. Most windows will download here on the bottom half of your screen. Some Macs will sometimes download up here in the corner, but all you're going to do is you're going to click this twice. So click, click. It is going to open it up and you would think that, oh, we're ready to go, but you are not. So if you are on a Mac, you're going to double click. If you're on a Windows, you're going to right click and extract all fonts. Um, but for this computer, all I have to do is double click this. It's then going to pull up our font and all you have to do is hit install font. Now this is going to be the same for both types of computers, both a Windows and a Mac. You're just going to install the font. Now where it installs is going to be different. So on a Mac, it's called a font book and on a Windows computer, it's called a character map. Both of these can be found in your finder, your search bar on your computer, very easy to find. Now, once you have downloaded it on the com or on your computer, we're going to go back to Design Space. Now, this is key. If you are working on something in Design Space and you are trying to upload a new font, you must go up here and save your work. Otherwise, this next step is going to um, completely delete out everything you've just done. So because we've not really moved anything around, we don't have to save. What I'm going to do is go up here to the top. I'm going to hit view and we are going to reload design space. Look at there. Now you can, we can, we're going to go over here to text. We are going to go to our fonts. All of the fonts that you are going to download from your computer are going to be found under system fonts. And then we are going to type in Noah and bada bing, bada boom. Bye. There you go. Yay. So I'm actually just going to delete this out because this is not going to be the right size. And I'm going to delete this S out. So now what you're going to do is you're going to type in your word. So today we're doing bros. Now, as you can see, this period ain't it for me. It's a square. I don't want that period. So I'm actually not going to use that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to our shapes and let me zoom in for you guys because I feel like that's a little, a little far away. So I'm going to grab my circle and bring it over here and size it down to the size that a regular little period would be for this word. And then I'm going to select both that and my word, and I'm going to align it on the bottom. Now we don't use align bottom very often, no. but this is a really good instance. If you are wanting to, if you have a font that you really like, but let's say you don't like the 
um, characters that come with it. So you don't like the exclamation point or the period or the question mark or something like that. And you do want to use a basic shape instead of that. That would be a really good instance where you would align everything to the bottom to make sure it's on the right row. For very specific instances. Very specific, but works great. Um, also, on the topics of stickiness and that, I can't really find anything that says which one's stickier uh -huh. than the other. But like my theory in my brain is that the first time I opened a fabric grip mat, it was probably brand new, and I was used to the older used standard grip mats, and I thought this is the stickiest mat I ever touched in my life. So it is less than the standard? I don't know for sure. It doesn't really say. It's, but I will say the order on most of the Google searches I did was light, standard, strong, fabric grip but that's just because i think that's just the way they came out because fabric grip mats are newer than the other mats huh. so anyways donna says i think that's the only time i've seen you guys align the bottom yep because we don't do it very often i feel like i recently did it on a project i don't know if we've shown the project yet but i recently used it and i thought uh -huh. i don't ever use the, the no but it, it does come in handy for instances like that so once you have your period placed where you want it, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down here to combine and I'm going to unite those together. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I can always go back up here and just select my circle individually and move it back and forth. So if I have this selected, let's just say I have my circle selected, like I can move it back and forth. But we're going to hit undo because I don't want to. So now, once we have typed out what we want, we're going to bring our blank back into frame because now we are going to measure how large we need to cut our word. Maybe we'll measure in a minute if I can find a measuring tape. Lord help us. We've got about 57. You know what? We're going to use a t-shirt ruler. <laughs> No, honey. There's probably one on my Look. Table. Oh, that's you kicking the thing. Sorry. It's okay. Uh -huh. Look, that's four inches. Yeah, go get me a thing. Okay. <laughs> this is, um, you would think as crafters, we would have everything that we needed <laughs> over here, but for some reason, it gets lost. There we go. There we go. So now I'm going to measure. So we've got 11 by five and a half. Yeah, roughly five and a half. So I'm going to come back to Design Space and I am going to bring in a shape. We're going to bring in this square. I'm going to unlock it. We have an 11 inch width by five and a half. We are going to zoom out, bring our bros to the front, change the color so we can see it. Obviously this is not the correct colors. And then we are going to size it up. And I really like this aligned here on the bottom corner, um, but I still want to make it a little bit bigger. And I think I might bring it up here. So now we have the size of the word that we need. That's what happens when you only do a live once a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of our stuff is in the craft room. Mm -hmm. So now that we have that aligned, I'm actually just going to hide this square. You can delete it if you plan on making more, whatever works for you. And then we're going to go to make it. So now you can see that it sits right up here in the top corner of our um, mat. So we are gonna come over here and you are going to watch me load our mat and we're gonna load it this way. And like I said, this is an insanely sticky mat. So we don't need any masking tape to really hold it down, but I am gonna bray it down just on the off chance that something happens. Kathy's trying to put a petition in for at least one more live a week. 
Well, next week, you all get us every single day. Yeah, your wish is our command. Your yeah. wish is <laughs> our command. We love that for you. You get your wish. Okay, so now I'm going to hit continue in design space. When people say they want to see our craft room, I just really... I just don't know. Don't, I mean... I know that you guys think that it's magnificent, but it's a literal disaster most of the time. 90, <laughs> nine point it's nine. It's beautiful. Yes. It's beautiful, but yes. it is messy. We're just, yeah. we're just busy. We're messy. Okay, so we are going to be cutting this on natural wood veneer. And then it tells us we're going to need our deep point blade, which as you can see over here, I already have loaded. And all you're going to do is put this in, load it into your Cricut. It will then check the length of the mat, make sure it's straight. And once it has done that, all you have to do is press play and let this do the work, y'all. Listen, how well can y'all hear me? Because I just got out of the DMs with Patrick Ali from Caesar, and I had messaged him because I want to try the giant DTV. Oh, yeah. So we're going to get, I don't know if you guys saw, but Caesar has come out. Hold with, on, let me come over here with you. Okay. So Caesar has come out with some giant SOS. SOS to that wide format printer. SOS. That might be an SOS. Oh, can you guys hear me? We still live? Maybe you should just stay away from me. Okay. Maybe stay I'm away. Because <laughs> somebody else said it froze too. Why is, what is wrong? There's no, I think this is a bad signal area. This is a dead zone. We lost them. No. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. First of all, somebody said, "Oh, that's why I didn't cut my first project attempt. I didn't put the pin in." So we, oh, we don't. You don't have to have this in. We just had this in because we've used it. But you don't have to have it in for your Cricut to cut. No, it just, was just in there. It was just we in. We back. Woohoo! Okay. Duh. Just tell them what they came out with and that we got them coming. Okay, okay. Caesar came out with wide format DTV. So like printable iron Printable iron-on, printable HTV. Like they're, honestly, it's one of my favorite printable iron-ons is the Caesar DTV. They came out with wide format, so you can do larger than 8.5 by 11, where Cricut came out with the wide format print and cut you can now do it on the Caesar DTV because they are coming out with a larger size. And Alicia was saying that she was talking to Patrick at Caesar and was like, yo, we need some of that like now. Like we needed it yesterday. <laughs> and he said, bet. Bet, say less. Say less. <laughs> okay. I'm going to make sure that this cut all the way through first before I unload it. Just give me two seconds. Oh Lord, it's this strong grip mat. <laughs> I'm going to get it with my strong hand. <laughs> okay. It is strong grip. Those strong grip mats will hold on to dear life. Like, okay. It did cut. So we're going to unload. It did. Yes. It's the Easy Color DTV is what it's technically called. Except giant. Okay. So here is the trick that I want to show you guys. We're actually going to try our best to unload this without like, we don't, you don't want to tear this sheet of wood veneer, okay? So we don't want to like cut it. I t I'm telling y'all this strong grip mat is like, it's, it's giving. It's giving. <laughs> it's, doing its, job. it's doing its job. I feel like I'm too old to say it's giving. We're a little too old. Yeah, we're in that. We're in the in between. Sometimes it just happens and it comes out. I know. And then I also I get embarrassed when I say it. <laughs> I do. Like, oh, that came out so gross. That did. <laughs> They're gonna think we're so cringy. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm like one of those moms who wants to be cool, but she's not. 
Oh, you know, I for sure am with I'm Asher. Like the mom on mean Girls who, she's like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm not a regular mom. I'm, a cool I'm mom. not a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. <laughs> she's like got the video camera. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> After talent show, she's doing the dance with him in the hall in the hallway. That's that's mom. Yes. <laughs> um. Okay. Give me two seconds. I'm really trying not to tear this because this is very important. This is part of the hacky hack Do that I'm. Maybe so, but I'm just afraid. I'm a feared. I'm a feared for my life. You're doing great. You're almost there. I know. I'm so close yet so far away. I feel like I'm grounded. I'm not allowed to talk. I know. Okay. So here's here's another little tidbit. The veneer can be very fragile. So if there is a part that for some reason it doesn't look like it cut all the way through. Ain't no shame in my game to come in here with a true control knife and pop that bad boy right there. You See, look at there. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Just look at it. Okay, Hannah says she wants a DTV tutorial. So we did one on the smaller DTV, but I'm hoping we definitely have a wide format sublimation tutorial coming up. And then I'm definitely going to be doing one with the wide format printable vinyl. Um, but you will have to have a wide format printer, obviously, yeah. to do that. So, um, ours is broken. <laughs> all the and eggs. I don't know how to fix printers. It all the eggs are picture. broken. All, yeah, and all of our <laughs> wide format printers are broken. Well, we have a new one, and then we have an old one that I've tried to try to fix. Okay. I did lose the center of that S, but you know what, y'all? It's okay. It's fine. I honestly, I think this, I think this, um, I think this mat is almost too sticky. And I, when I say brand new, like, I took the stuff off yesterday, mm. off of this mat. So this we... This is why we pick mats based on how they feel. Yeah. Sometimes, because y'all know, like, we'll do tutorials sometimes, and, like, in the tutorial, we'll show you the mat that you're technically supposed to use. But when we're cutting it out there, sometimes we're just feeling the mat. And going with it. And then, yeah, yeah. I mean, because it just is like that sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Okay, so we are going with gravity and also getting these stuck back to the mat. So we're going to take these little guys off. Going with gravity does help. But like I can see the stickiness come off of these things. It's all good. So another thing that you can do with the Cricut Wood Veneer, if you have these little edges like this, just come in here with some... Uh, right here with some sandpaper and just sand that little guy down and he'll be good as gold. See, look at that. We're just going to tear this middle guy out of here. And then I'm actually, I can't get my sandpaper in there, but I'm going to take this true control knife and just kind of clear that out. And then the little center of the B. We're going to make sure he comes out of there. And then you have your word cut out. Okay? Nice. Okay. Now here is the trick. Here is the trick. So to line this up, Ty says yes, use a nail file. Nail file would be great for this. Genius. Genius. To line this up, you're going to take the veneer that you just cut it out of and you're going to place it on your blank, okay? And what we're going to do is we are going to start with like our B. I'm going to take my dab glue and I'm using this as a stencil. You can, um, but you don't have to because if once you put like the first letter down, you can use that as a guide for the rest of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So That's it's all good. Thank you, Kathy and Lindsay, for liking my videos of multiple crafts. Those were our experimental videos. We were wondering if people would love them. Um, it's still up in the air. It's still like 50-50. I think um, like our people love them. I don't know if the algorithm loves yeah. Um, we do have one coming out. It's seven spring wreaths, and they're all Dollar Tree. And, like, I feel like they were pretty cute. I feel like we, 
I feel like you guys are really in line with those now. Okay, so there's our B. No, the veneer is not sticky on one side. We're actually using DAP glue to stick it down. I'm just using it as a stencil right now. You know what I feel like, and I don't know how the machine, would, how well the machine would cut this. Also, if I'm shouting, I'm sorry. I just want you guys to hear me. Um, I wonder if you put 3M on the back of the wood veneer and then cut it, if you would be able to do it that way. But you would have to cut it probably more times, like more passes, and yeah. it's harder cut. And using more pressure. Yeah. And then that would be, so you have adhesive on the back, but it's probably harder in your machine to cut that thick of material. Oh. Bro. 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 Okay, I, th I feel like I did this the last time and I put the glue on the wrong side for some reason, like upside down, upside down and backwards. <laughs> yeah. And I, you can see I had to cut another S because of that. So let me make sure it's, this, is, this is correct. We live and we learn. Yep. And then we're just adding some more dab glue. Placing it in. And you'll want to make sure not to let it ooze out either. You might accidentally glue your stencil too many times. Yeah. So we're, see, we've got it. That's why I, did, I wasn't using a lot of glue. You're just using um, just a little bit there. It does not take a lot of dab glue. A dab. A dab of a dab of dab glue will do you. And there you go. Bravo. And look how cute. And simple and quick and easy. That'd be a cute little uh, baby shower gift. I know. I love that. Very cute. I know. So cute. So pretty. Um, did she put the top back on the knife? Did you want the knife for you? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Okay. First time for everything. Yeah. Okay, let's come back <laughs> over. <laughs> oh, I almost just lost my phone. Okay. Yes, you can stain the veneer if you want to. They also come in different colors. Yeah. Like they come in finished stains. So the one that we used today was the natural uh, veneer, so it has more of a natural wood finish. It comes in a cherry and a walnut as well. Yes. So the walnut is darker. The cherry has more of a red undertone. But, I mean, you could paint it, you could stain it a different color. Um, did you all know that you can take acrylic paint and turn it into like a stain? Yep, that's one of my old tricks. Leash taught me that my one. old tricks of the trade. You can just water it down a little bit. Water it down. And it's like a stain. There I, you go. You know, I learned to do that because it, stain is so stinky and expensive. And when I worked at the paint studio, it was like way faster for us to do signs without like everyone having stain and gloves and like all this right and, and stain really and truly honestly guys if I was doing this and I was doing these signs I would probably stain my blanks at least 24 right. hours before I did that now it works yeah. it's not that it doesn't work but because stain is an oil based it really mm -hmm. needs that time to dry and like Com cure and completely dry down. So True. especially if you are fixing to apply vinyl to something yeah. you've stained, you pretty much can't yeah, like unless you, cannot, you let it sit and cure. Yeah, for at least 24 hours. I yeah. recommend 48 hours, which seems like a stretch, but just do your prep, and then when you go to put the vinyl on, you're ready to go. Right. Everything's cured, and it's so, going to stay. So if you wanted to do this like very fast, using that acrylic paint, it dries down a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can pretty much dry it with like a hair dryer or a heat gun and then it's ready to go. So. Yes, you can use coffee and tea to make a natural stain. If you don't want to use an oil-based stain, you can use coffee and tea and natural things to make a natural stain. Did you know that avocados will dye pink? Avocado pits? You can tie dye things pink with avocado pits. Well, I knew about cabbage, that oh, you could know. dye things purple <gasps> and blue with blue with purple cabbage. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That it's makes, another natural tie-dye. That's something 
very crunchy that I want to do. It's like tie-dye. <laughs> very with like, granola. Yeah, like I want to tie-dye with like things like that. And like make art with like pressed flowers where it like stains the paper and stuff. Uh-huh. I, that's my kind of crafting. Yes. I really like stuff like that. Yes. Um, you could use antique wax. Yes, if you wanted to. Um, we, the bro, like the sign is go, actually going to go in a nursery. Um, so you could do little bro or big mm -hmm. bro or little sis, or you could do a name. You could do a nickname. You could do, but these are really, really cute, like shelf sitters yeah. for kids rooms, nurseries, yeah, all those things. I love it. I think they're so cute. Well, does anyone have any more questions before we hop out of here? Um, this was a little bit of a shorter live. I'm not mic'd up, <laughs> but hopefully next week we'll be uh, more prepared. I guess um, I could hold the mic in the middle. It's fine. It's fine. We're almost done anyways. Um, but if you guys missed it, we talked about boot camp earlier. Yes. So if you all are like wanting to do boot camp, you need to make sure and get signed up because you have to sign up in order to be there unless you're already a member. And in that case, you're automatically invited. Right. So um, I'm trying to see. Our first one is Monday and it's going to be at 1.30 Eastern Standard and we're doing paper orchids. Paper orchids. They're so cute. Uh, I actually so cute. added the leaves to it finally the other day. It looks so really good. It looks a lot better than it did. Yes. Um, and then Tuesday is the canvas sign. Yes. Wednesday is the um, cake toppers where we're going to teach you guys how to take a photo. Um, so someone's face, the full photo, whatever, and put it into design space, make it a print and cut, and then put it on a either cupcake topper or a cake topper. It's very cute. So cute. Um, and then Thursday's Thursday. Dollar it, Tree Leather. Dollar Tree Leather. And then yes. Friday is the interchangeable door sign. So cute. Love it. They're very, very cute. So, um, Kathy says definitely have to fix that before next week. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. We will get it fixed and we will work on it. Yes. Um, um, you could also hang it on the wall. If you didn't want this sign yeah. to be like a shelf sitter, you could put like hangers on it. You could do um, a ribbon. You could do a piece of rope would be cute to yeah. hang. Like do like a little collage wall. Lots of different things you could do to this. Get creative. Um, Welcome, Elizabeth. Yes. Love that. Um, for Monday's craft, is there a less expensive alternative to the pot? Kathy, one of the things that I have been suggesting to people, um, I suggest that you make the flower first before you go out and buy the pot. You don't have to get the exact pot that we got. I mm. just linked that for you guys because y'all like that. I actually found, I think, a cuter pot at the Walmart dollar spot for $2.50 the other day. The Walmart it's dollar like spot a, is so cute. It's like a terracotta color, and it's got, mm. it looks, it's, kind of modern, mm -hmm. um, which I love like modern looking things, but really and truly you can use any pot you want. I just linked the exact one that I got at Hobby Lobby and y'all, the only reason I got that pot is because I needed it right then. Right. And yeah, the, it's, the it's, Dollar Tree is going to have options. It's yeah. Spring, so it's, there's lots of flower pots everywhere It's right just now. when I went to get that, Dollar Tree didn't have their spring stuff in yet, so they didn't mm -hmm. have their flower pots. Yeah, Otherwise, true. I would have gone to Dollar Tree and got the flower pot. For sure. For yeah. sure. Um, can these all be done with an Explore 3? Yes, all of the projects that we are making next week can be done with a maker mm -hmm. and explore. And I'm going to say most of them can be done with a joy. Now, I know that a joy does not do print and cut. Uh, however, I am coming out. There is a video coming out very soon where I mm -hmm. teach you a workaround for um, a Cricut Joy print and cut hack. That's going to be a good video. That's going to be a good Yeah, y'all are going to really like that. Our Joy users especially. Yes. Um, and then, other than that, pretty much everything we're doing, except for, like I said, the print and cut, it's, gonna, it's one of those things, like, if you know how to do it on a Joy, then you know how to do it. But if not, technically a Joy doesn't have that capability. But everything else can be done on pretty much any machine. Right, right. Okay, Yay. well, we will see you guys. Um, if you're members, we have a master class tomorrow. We are going to be turning photos into silhouette portraits. Um, oh, kind of like, yeah. the, like the classic cameo 
vibe, you know, that people Love have. that. Yes, so it's going to be super cute. We're doing, it's HTV on wood. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to remove the background from your photo, things like that, with and without Cricut access. I'm going to show you guys both ways. Mm -hmm. And then um, if you're not a member and you want to come to boot camp, make sure to sign up, and we'll see you guys on Monday. Yes. Um, also, just a reminder, tomorrow we're doing our member-only live as a Zoom, correct? Yes. It is going to be the first time we have done a member-only live as a Zoom. Yeah. Our master class. So make sure you have that Zoom link. We will not be on Facebook this time. We are going to be on Zoom. So we can, like, chit-chat. Yes. Which is really exciting. We're very excited Yay. for that. Yay. Okay. And if you are trying to get access to the member-only master class, go into your dashboard find the Facebook group or just go on to Facebook and it's in the events in the Facebook group. There's a Zoom link within the event. Yes. So Zoom link within the event on Facebook. Yes. Does that that's hope that makes sense. <laughs> Um, I didn't get a message about tomorrow. It has been okay, so Sin says the link has been emailed to members. So check your email. Check your spam. Check your spam. The Zoom link is in the event on the Facebook page. I wonder if the Facebook page is logged in over here on this computer, if anybody is logged into Facebook and can see the event. Um, you can try Let it. Let me try it real quick. Yeah. Stay right there on Alicia while I, oh, she don't have a mic. It's okay. Give um, me two seconds. The master class tomorrow. Let me, I was going to grab, so we're doing, like, basically we're taking a photo, like I'm taking a picture of my baby, and I'm going to get her silhouette. And then we're going to take the background off and we're just going to be cutting the outline of her silhouette. And then we're adding like a really pretty wreath around it. And so you can just like hang it on your wall or something like that. Um, so I'm going to be showing you all how to do that in the Facebook group tomorrow. That is our members only masterclass. Um, we always do one every month for our members. So it's going to be really fun, but it is going to be a Zoom call. And so that means that you all are going to be able to kind of interact directly with me while I'm teaching it, which is like super fun. Um, so yes, there's always, those videos are always able to replay um, because they we don't remove our master classes. So they're always going to be on your dashboard forever. Okay. I can't, it's, uh, Facebook kept giving me an error. Just check so, your Facebook group. It's yeah. in there. I promise. Yep. Okay. Well, we will see you guys tomorrow and or Monday. Sounds great. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.